Well, hey there, you guys. What's going on? This is Ian McKenzie with the Average Rose Fitness Podcast. So each week, I'll be coming to you guys with a weekly blueprint or summary of some of the main points of these people that I talk to. Because one thing I'm realizing is that all of these people are presenting for us a very unique way of approaching fitness if you've never understood anything about fitness before. And what's so revolutionary about all the stuff that they're telling me is the variety of ways you can not only make your approach to fitness very simplified, but you can also make it fun, varied, interesting, and ways you can figure out your own adaptable process. And that's the reason why I'm doing this is because I want feedback from not only fitness professionals, but regular people who have been through incredible weight loss stories who have information that is frankly just as good as the information you're going to get from fitness professionals. We are leveling the playing field. We're giving you guys the common thread of fitness that unites us all. Because nowadays with social media and so much of the noise you get, we need a media outlet that that synthesizes everything from the professionals, from the normal people, and gives you a very comprehensive approach to fitness that relies or revolves around the idea that you can become your own personal trainer even if you know absolutely nothing about fitness. And what I'll be talking about today is some of the cool things that were referenced in these interviews. And a lot of them were referenced a bunch of times across a bunch of different interviews. That's the cool thing about it is that I found a bunch of the same concepts that seem to really work, especially if you're trying to do this yourself. I don't have money to pay for a trainer. We don't have money to pay for trainers, right? We need to be able to rely on conclusive, concrete, evidence-based research for fitness. And these people are giving it to me. It's amazing. And they are sharing it with you guys. And I want to summarize some of the most amazing things that they talked about. So, in my interview with Brittany Kovacs, right, this was a recent interview, she said something that blew my mind. And actually, I'll look it up for you guys right here. Brittany Kovacs brought up the idea of gluten insensitivity. And for me, gluten insensitivity is one of these big things that has always, 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 always made me sick to my stomach because of the simple fact that people go into the whole gluten insensitivity thing with the idea that you can only eat certain things, right? It's it's a very limiting mindset, the gluten insensitivity. And this is her, Lindsay, sorry, not Lindsay, Brittany Kovacs, and she is a wonderful, wonderful, amazing trainer. She had an incredible view on fitness when it came to mom's workouts and that kind of thing. But she shared with me concepts that blew my mind because it's what we need to understand, especially now. The idea of gluten insensitivity is straightforward eating too much carbs. Just cut back on the carbs. And and she said too, she said something that, that also resonated with me. She said it's the way in which you eat those carbs, right? It's not just the overabundance of carbs. It's the binge eating at the end of the day that can lend itself to you thinking that you're gluten insensitive, right? Unless you go to a doctor and he says you have celiac disease, take a look at your diet program because a lot of times we are doing something that is contributing itself to maybe feeling as though we're gluten insensitive. Now, it's not to belittle people who actually have a gluten insensitivity, right? Sometimes you can, but if you just self-diagnose yourself, without even thinking about the other aspects. It's, you're playing the blame game. You're just blaming gluten. Don't blame gluten. Blame yourself. You're the problem. And I'm not saying that to knock you down, but you are. You are. You can go back and you can cut out a few carbs here and there and make these changes that will allow you to not only feel better, but to understand that the changes are simple. Things you can do with your diet are simple and allow you to keep progressing through your fitness lifestyle without having to think too much about a gluten insensitivity. The change is simple. The solution is simple. It's not that difficult, right? So that's something she brought up that I found was just 
a, a huge nugget of wisdom that you and I need to hear, especially now. And it falls into the idea of intuitive eating. She also brought in into the conversation, she brought in the idea of reverse dieting, which is another concept that we don't know about. Reverse dieting is slowly but surely implementing calories back into your program. And I think if I'm being real with you, every single person who comes to a trainer and thinks they need a more strict diet or workout plan and they say, just change me, right? You probably need to do some form of reverse dieting because more likely than not, you are not eating enough calories. You're not. You're not. And then you're probably not eating enough protein because that's the other thing I find. You're you're not eating enough calories and maybe you are, but you're getting them from improper sources. So reverse dieting is an amazing reset button for what you're trying to do because if you hit a plateau, I think you need to reverse diet. I really do. If you hit that plateau and you think that the way to get past it is to add more rigidity and add more more dieting and exercise and working out into your life, you're just going to keep going down that same rabbit hole. You want to reverse diet and try to implement calories back in to what you're doing because the only way you're going to maintain a consistent level of progress is if you work to reduce your stress. Fitness and exercise has to be something that takes stress away from you as opposed to adding it on, right? So if your plans are just making you more stressed, more anxious, then you're doing something wrong, which is why I kind of don't like intermittent fasting, right? Because for me, intermittent fasting just makes me hangry. I wake up in the morning, if you intermittent fast, you feel terrible, you feel terrible. I'm kind of doing that a little bit now, and I don't like it. I don't. I need to eat more food, eat more breakfast regularly, right? And, you know, I think intermittent fasting advocates will tell you that it's okay. That's going to be what happens, right? You're going to feel terrible the first couple weeks or so. Why should I have to feel like that? Maybe I don't need to, right? Maybe my body's telling me I should eat like a normal person. So the idea of intuitive eating is very simply just eating like a normal person. And that has been lost. That's the funny thing. In the rigmarole of keto and intermittent fasting, the idea of simply just eating three meals a day and trying to get a very consistent calorie consumption has lost its effectiveness because that does not seem doable. And what I mean by that is that if we're trying to lose weight or make quick progress, we immediately go into the mindset of just needing to eliminate things. We think that we are doing something wrong and we have to get rid of bad things as opposed to add in good things, right? Add in the calories. Don't get rid of, don't eliminate, don't go down that very extreme path. I do still think there is a place for keto though. I do, I do. If you are somebody who needs that that mood boost, that encouragement to get you going on that path, that jump start, try keto. You'll lose weight fast. You'll feel good, really and truly. Try keto. Try to do maybe one of these extreme diets, but then know that your body is going to adapt at some point. Our bodies are made to adapt. So a month down the line, you're probably going to feel as though you've hit a plateau. You probably feel like your progress is going to slow drastically. That's when you need to maybe consider reverse dieting. So just take my word for it and take Brittany's word for it. This is something that she advocates, especially in mommy fitness, right? This is very important. And with COVID, right? Being at home and being stressed out already, not being able to be out and about. I pause there, out and about. So so that's Britt Kovacs. And she was absolutely freaking wonderful. A wealth of knowledge. And I hope you guys get a lot out of her podcast. You should check that out. The next guy I want to talk about, just a few things, was trainer... David Mathis. And his approach to personal training, if I can be honest with you guys, was how every personal trainer needs to do training. I truly believe that. You guys need to check him out because his approach to training is revolutionary. It's revolutionary because it makes a lot of damn sense, okay? New personal trainers get into the trap, and I did too, thinking that we have to promise people a quick weight loss, right? Like stick with me, you'll lose weight in a month. Stick with me, I'll get you to where you need to go. David Mathis was honest 
is honest with his clients. He says, look, it's going to be 12 weeks. You're signing up for 12 weeks with me. You're in it for the long haul. And you need to understand that I am going to be there for you every step of the way. And I'm going to be checking in with you. But this is a long haul. And being honest straight up with your, with your clients like that and laying out all of the real aspects of personal training is exactly how we should all do this, especially if you're doing one-on-one. I lost interest in the one-on-one training. Just, you know, I'll do it every now and again, but it's it's something I feel people need to really accept as a long-term commitment. And then on top of that, it, we all have those mental barriers where we think that we need to do something more strict. Like I said earlier, we think we need to overhaul our current program or something we've set before ourselves because we usually think that we are doing something wrong. The way David Mathis approaches training is he says, look, you're not. You're not. What I'm going to try to do for you guys is implement small changes that you can reasonably work through on a daily basis. And I think it is beautiful to me. It is beautiful to tell people this because it is such a stress-free way of training. And also, it's very encouraging. If they don't do something during a week, if they mess up or something, he'll be there to lift them up and help them. Us as good personal trainers are meant to do that for people. We are meant to be there to help you through the long haul. Don't go into personal training with the mindset that you're going to make quick change. Ain't going to happen. There's a lot of things that have to be done. And David Mathis, I think in his Instagram, he said something. He posted a meme. Dude's got an incredible meme game going on. Go check out his page just for his freaking memes. Even if you don't want him to train you, he's got cool memes. So in one of the memes, it, it, it brought up the point of being told to reverse diet. And this goes back to what Brittany was telling me. David Mathis is the same way. This idea of reverse dieting has lost its flavor in today's society, right? Because of everything we have coming at us, all the different noise from Instagram, social media, all the plug and play plans out there. So when it comes to becoming your own personal trainer, start there. See what you can do to gradually introduce carbs or calories back into your diet. Who knows? You might actually need carbs too. Because if you're trying to build muscle and you're trying to sustain a weight loss plan, carbs fuel the workout. You need breakfast. If you front load your carbs and your other calories in the morning, binge eating is less likely to happen. People think that breakfast is bad, especially if you're trying to lose weight. Breakfast is not bad. If you're trying to lose weight, get your body into a very regular system of eating. It'll be gradual. The weight loss will be gradual. And also, too, it's about body recomposition. The number on the scale doesn't mean anything. And anybody, any personal trainer is going to tell you that, right? Body recomposition is the name of the game. So go into the gym with the mindset of variety. Go into the gym with the mindset of not only just doing weight training, right? Mix it up. Make your weight training a hit one day. Make your cardio a hit one day. Do heavy weight training one day. Do lightweight weight training one day. Mix it up for yourself and find the style that you tend towards, you know? Exercise does not have to be rigid. In fact, exercise just has to focus on the richness of movement. And that's how you guys should approach being your own personal trainer.